a, another section of surgical pathology slide review and sign out with uh, Dr. Hassel and digital slides. Uh, today we will be looking at more of the nuances in pancreatic pathology and specifically looking at a case of a tumor from a 65-year-old man who has a mass in the pancreatic tail. Here's a low power image showing this neoplasm. We can see on the left here the pancreatic parenchyma lobulated, fairly blue uh, without specific lesions. And then here in the upper right portion, the tumor, uh, which has apparently compressed some areas of pancreatic parenchyma here and seems to have slightly different appearance between these two areas. Looking at higher magnification, we see here that, yes, this indeed is still lobular pancreatic parenchyma that has been compressed and become slightly fibrotic. And then nearby here, as we enter into the tumor, we see a fairly lobulated, sharply circumscribed tumor with maybe small islands, maybe even some uh, uh, potential uh, vascular space invasion in this particular area here. Um, and the tumor is fairly uniform with cords and nested areas of tumor cells that uh, have quite abundant uh, pink cytoplasm with a lot of granularity. You can see there are a few nuclei, nuclei in some of the cells and the tumor's cell nuclei are slightly variable but mostly fairly uniform and round. In some areas, see the nuclei appear to have a basilar appearance with a, a glandular or apical uh, secretory pattern type of uh, cytoplasm. We also note that this area of the tumor does have a ductal structure located centrally. And if we look around a little bit further, we see some variability in the kind of cytoplasm that these tumor cells have as well some slightly vacuolated, a little bit uh, uh, variable in terms of the cytoplasmic content. If we look over at the other area of the tumor, this more blue uh, tumor area, there are a number of things that are of note here. One is this interface right here between the normal pancreatic lobular parenchyma and the tumor. We'll look first at these cells they look a little different than the first area we studied. Again, the cytoplasm is eosinophilic, amphophilic, and slightly granular. And the nuclei are still quite uh, uh, uniform and round with a little bit of salt and pepper or uh, scattered chromocenter type of uh, nuclear material. There are occasional mitotic figures in this uh, area. Uh, if we look around, uh, we can see maybe one here and a few others around here and here. So it's a mitotically active tumor. Looking at this pattern, a sort of, sort of insular uh, island type pattern with uniform round nuclei, we might think very uh, strongly about the possibility of a neuroendocrine tumor. And that certainly would be in our differential. This interface here, however, between the tumor and the acinar parenchyma is quite instructive. There's a seemingly very gradual merge. There's not much of a, um, an antagonism. Although we have this fold here in the slide, uh, we can look here down on this side of that and see that there's almost an imperceptible uh, boundary between this acinar parenchyma of the normal thyroid and this tumor parenchyma here to this side. In addition to islet cell tumor, excuse me, neuroendocrine tumor or islet tumors, islet derived tumors of the pancreas, we would also then, based on this particular area and the cytoplasmic features, be uh, certainly very concerned about acinar carcinoma. We might also consider a solid pseudopapillary tumor, although uh, this does not have uh, the typical uh, uh, vascular cores of uh, that neoplasm as we've seen on earlier cases. 
Immunohistochemistry then may be of use in separating these two tumors and referring very briefly to the pathology outlines summary on uh, acinar carcinoma, we note that the critical stains are those that evidence uh, exocrine uh, proteases such as trypsin, chymotrypsin, lipase, amylase, butyrate esterase. Um, negative stains, CD56, uh, Pax8, and mucin are important to uh, differentiate uh, from uh, other pancreatic tumors. But of note is the fact that synaptophysin uh, will be variable. So this is a case where uh, positive synaptophysin staining might be seen, and if you were only doing neuroendocrine stains with CD, excuse me, with synaptophysin and chromogranin, you might be misled in making uh, the diagnosis of neuroendocrine tumor when, in fact, you were dealing with a uh, acinar cell carcinoma. Acinar cell carcinomas are more frequent in men and generally don't cause uh, ductal obstruction. Uh, hence, there is uh, quite a bit of preservation of normal pancreatic lobules. Uh, we'll look here at another example that shows a slightly different morphology than what we saw in our uh, uh, registry case. Here we see a tumor that has uh, quite a bit of glandular formation. Um, we see residual ducts and we see an infiltrated pattern of tumor around these ducts uh, without uh, obvious obstruction. So we might be thinking more likely a ductal carcinoma here. Um, and in fact, with this nice glandular pattern, uh, that certainly could be one of our first thoughts. Uh, here we see these cells have a, a glandular central secretory uh, product type of appearance. Um, and very few of the features that we were thinking of before. So what the only thing that would help us in this situation to distinguish this from a ductal adenocarcinoma would be the presence of uh, the protease secretory protein products such as trypsin, chymotrypsin, and amylase, which in fact this tumor uh, stained positively for quite nicely. So that's a little caveat and a brief overview of pancreatic acinar carcinoma. Thanks for joining us today for this uh, short uh, digital microscopy session, and we hope that you uh, will come back again.